Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Aspiring entrepreneurs learn the basics of setting up a business. Oh, okay, IRS. You're gonna tell us the basics of how to set up a business, huh? I mean, honestly. The IRS is just gonna tell us the basics of how to give the IRS our business proceeds. Not how to make the business actually work. And if the business doesn't make any proceeds, trust me, the IRS has nothing more they wanna teach us. I'm telling you, the IRS teaching us how to make our business work. It's like my cousin's five-year-old kid teaching their dad how to run his business while reminding him incessantly of her birthday coming up. Teach us the basics of, I mean, is it just me or is the wording we see these days often misleading and manipulative? Anyways, first an attempt at a joke. I heard some crazy dude saying he was living off the fat of the land. Isn't this great, Stan? Living off the land? No, it sucks. I hate- And I can only imagine he was actually hunting for his food. Others hunt for food. The only thing I'm hunting for is an outfit that looks good. His prey being the average American. It's terrifying. Who wants to look like a big fat pig? Get off the fat jokes! Get off fat! Get off fat! Fat, lost, and fat, no. Two Jews got off, no. Uh, Syrian. Uh. IRS Tax Tip 2022-128, August 22nd, 2022. New entrepreneurs can start out on the right foot by making sure they understand the tax responsibilities of running a business. It's not too difficult in theory, the IRS being like my cousin's five-year-old kid with her birthday coming up, they want your money. So that's the first thing to get down, get to understand. So the process can seem daunting, but irs.gov, irs.gov, irs.gov has resources to help new business owners. And there's a link to those resources here. Here are a few things new entrepreneurs need to do when starting their business. Choose a business structure. The forms of business determines which income tax return a business taxpayer needs to file. The most common business structures are so note, this is gonna be an important kind of component because it does have an impact on like how much administration stuff you're gonna do and tax impacts related to it as well. So there's a lot uh, within these topics. I just want to note, however, that uh, when you're talking to professionals about what kind of structure that you should have in place, you need to be aware that if you're talking to someone that is in the business, like a lawyer, or a CPA firm that is in the business of setting up like a partnership or an S corporation or so on, they might have somewhat of a bias because of course that's their business to set up those kind of business entities. So you wanna kind of take that into consideration and possibly if you're thinking about changing your business entity type, for example, or setting up a business, then you might want to be talking to someone who is not going to be involved with the administration of the taxes related to it so that you can get kind of an independent decision and try to weigh the pros and cons and then go into the decision-making process. So for example, we got a sole proprietorship, we got a partnership, we got a corporation, an S corporation, limited liability company. So the sole proprietorship is the, e the thing about it is it's the easiest thing to set up. So if, you're, if you were, for example, a W-2 employee and now you're picking up some gig work or something like that, then you're most likely gonna be set up as a sole proprietorship because that's just the easiest thing to do. If you start making money and you're not making money through a W-2, then the IRS still wants some of it, right? How are you gonna report it to the IRS? You're gonna report it on a Schedule C uh, typically. So anybody that's making, you know, basically money, a sole, uh, one individual that's not under the umbrella generally of a W-2 will basically kind of by default be in a sole proprietorship. Now that doesn't mean that you don't have other like state and local responsibilities like possibly setting up license and business license and that kind of stuff. But from the IRS side of things, which is the federal side of things, then then you're basically just, all you have to do is basically start making money, right? And then, you, and then you're gonna be reporting it on the Schedule C. So the beauty of that is it's basically easy. So you got the sole proprietorship, an unincorporated business owned by an individual. There's no distinction between the taxpayer and their business. We have a partnership. Now a partnership, is similar to a sole proprietorship, but now you have two people that are kind of going into something and making money. Now, just be aware that a partnership 
although it's kind of simple in its structure, the, the distribution of the revenue between the two partners can be complex and you might need another tax return, which is a flow through tax return in order to properly report it oftentimes, unless it's an exception, like a married couple might have a, some exceptions to that, for example, but that does add a level of complexity. Also note that if you are a sole proprietorship and you wanna take on and do business with somebody else, you could then partner with someone else uh, however, when you do that, then you're, you're also like any kind of partnership, you're both of you are responsible kind of for the decisions of the other partner. And you got to make clear what the what the distributions are going to be from the income and so on and so forth. And of course, your your control over the business is going to be divided in that instance as well. And, and you have to be clear and lay those things down or uh, people are going to have different, they're going to be, if you got two partners going in the different directions, and then obviously that's going to be causing a, a problem in the future. So the other option is if you're a sole proprietorship and you want to pick up uh, some someone else is to hire them as an employee or to pick up someone else as a contractor. So now they're working as an independent contractor, possibly depending on you know the nature of your setup. You got to make sure that they are in alignment with a contractor or uh, uh, employee, whichever would work, if that's the other way you want to go. But just be aware of partnering up to, with one or multiple people then adds a whole lot of complexity as opposed to a sole proprietor because a sole proprietor, you know, has the capacity as a small business. One person, if they have the vision of, of whatever they're going to do, can basically implement that pretty, pretty well. If you have a, if you have multiple people in a small business, then you have multiple different directions that can be kind of, uh, kind of difficult unless everybody's again in the in the same lineup, and you want to make sure that you have that whatever everybody's goals are listed down. Who's going to get how much revenue, and so on and so forth. What's going to be the revenue split, and so on, and all that kind of stuff should be laid out well. But you still have liability issues with the standard partnership as you do with the sole proprietorship. It's an unincorporated business with ownership shared between two or more people. The corporation then is gonna be breaking out. This is when you get you know, obviously larger at that point in time. And you might be into a, into a situation now where you know, you've, got, you've got more people involved and you're gonna be making more decisions, meaning one person, for example, you often are getting to the size of the business that one person can't really run everything at that point in time, right? So now you've got multiple people, you need a structure, a management structure to run and specialize in particular areas, possibly of the business. Usually a C corporation would mean that you're large, you know, you're larger because there is more cost with setting up a C corporation. And that's why they set up these S and limited liabilities. We'll talk about second, but that also known as a C corporation, it's a separate entity owned by shareholders. So the beauty of that is now you've got this separate legal entity and in theory, the separate legal entity also comes with liability protection. So when you're talking to someone that's in the business of setting up C corporations, S corporations, limited liabilities, they're gonna always say, and it's true, that the sole proprietors have more liability uh, exposure, whereas the corporation is a separate legal entity, meaning with a sole proprietor, they can go after like your home or something like that more easily than in a corporation. Now you can kind of safeguard against that to some degree in a sole proprietorship with insurance. You can try to buy, of course, liability insurance, which you probably want in, in either case. And if you're, if you're starting out and you don't have any money, then it, it might not be, you know, saving someone from suing you when you don't have anything, you know, is a, is not may not be as as big of a problem. But obviously, if you, as you get more and more money, then you're more of a target for people wanting to sue you. Right? So then, then you could use more protection at that point in time. But the corporation also has problems with a smaller type of company because there's generally double taxation because when you draw the money out as a dividend, as a sole, I mean, as a draw for sole proprietorship or partnership, then you're not taxed on it. It's only taxed one time, basically on your individual tax return when you earn it. But a corporation, because it's a separate legal entity, actually pays taxes as that separate legal entity. The tax return is not just a pass through or flow through tax return. They're like a separate individual that pays taxes. And then when they give you the money in the form of dividends, you might have to pay taxes again because now you got dividend income. So the way around that double taxation, they set up S corporations and limited liability companies. 
So, and these are an attempt to have the best of both worlds. And so if you're, if you're thinking that you're a sole proprietorship and you're talking to some a CPA or a lawyer that specializes in setting up businesses for small businesses, they probably specialize in S corporation setup and limited liability setups. And they could be, they could have some good benefits for you, but they also come with costs because it, it's a lot more work to do the to do just the, the paperwork and all that kind of stuff for the, the S corporation and limited liability, for example, than a sole proprietorship because all you do there is file a Schedule C. Here, you have to file a separate tax return. You have to have a flow through. You might have to actually have payroll, even if you're only one individual with no, with no uh, employees and so on. So it can get a little bit more tricky to know exactly what's going on uh, here. So, so there's some good reasons because you should have liability protections and so on to go over to here, but it's also a substantial more administrative work and confusing confusion factor comes into play and you're going to be more tied in and need professional help most likely from a tax professional and so on to make sure that you're managing and, and guide you in, in terms of how you're reporting things and so on when you go here so that's the step to kind of be careful of it's often for a sole proprietor or small business the question of should i be a sole proprietorship and then as i grow should i create partners or will the partners uh splinter our my my overall mission which i'm clear about right or or can we synergize together and the partnership is going to work together you got to make sure you or once you're in here should i level up to an s corporation or a limited liability possibly to have payroll i mean liability protection there which again you can think about you might be able to be taking with liability insurance instead of doing that possibly but you have to consider the costs related to it and then you might also have tax implications with moving up to the S corporation as well. There could be benefits often on say the, say the, the federal side, like a S corporation, you might have some payroll tax benefits and some, uh, some tax benefits related to social security and Medicare. But again, you, have, you might have to process payroll, <laughs> which you wouldn't even have to do if you, if you didn't have any employees and you were like a sole proprietorship or something uh, like that. And you might have state tax problems as well because the state uh, might charge you fees, quote, end quote, <laughs> or, or, which is basically a tax, even though it's a flow through entity that's not supposed to be subject to taxes. So in any case, S corporation, a corporation that elects to pass corporate uh, income, losses, deductions, and credits through to the, to the shareholder, limited liability company, a business structure allowed by state status. Now these two, the decision between these two will often be dependent in part by the state that you're in and what kind of benefits you're trying to get and the industry that you're in. So you wanna make sure that you're, you have a, a advisor that's, that's advising you properly kind of between these two options. And oftentimes tax pros specialize in one of these two options or possibly specialize in a particular industry which leans towards one of these two options for whatever reasons uh, related to that industry. So be aware. So choose a tax year. A tax year is, is an annual accounting period for keeping records and reporting income and expenses. A new business owner must choose either. You got the calendar year, consecutive months beginning January 1st, ending December 31st. You got the fiscal year, 12 consecutive months ending on the last day of any month except December. So most people probably do in the calendar year, but for certain uh, reasons, you might want the, the another year of fiscal year. It's still gotta be like that <clears throat> 12, uh, consecutive calendar months and there could be some restrictions to what you choose depending on the type of entity that you are choosing up top so be aware of that apply for an employer identification number the good old EIN uh, there's a link to that here is also called a federal tax identification number now the EIN uh, stands for employer identification number so you might think for example if I was a sole proprietorship up here with no employees I'm not doing payroll why do I need an EIN but you might still want one as a sole proprietorship because then uh, if someone asks you for like a information for like a 1099 because they want a 1099 you or any or if you're discussing any jobs with another company it's unprofessional really often to give them your social security number it's also you know more of a security risk and so on so you might want an EIN. It's pretty easy to set up. You do not need to be a corporation or an S corporation or whatever, or have employees to get an EIN. You could be a sole proprietorship and it could be a useful thing to have. So, so be aware. 
So most business need one of these numbers. It's important for a business with an EIN to keep the business mailing address, location, and responsible party up to date. IRS uh, regulations require EIN holders to report changes in the responsible, responsible party within 60 days. They do this by completing form 8822B, change of address of responsible party and mailing it to the address on the form. So you can change you know who's responsible for dealing with it dealing with the with the company matters in the ein in other words if it's a sole proprietorship obviously it's straightforward but if you're a corporation s corporation or limited liability you might have multiple people that are in charge and because these are separate legal entities there's no one individual that obviously is, is in charge because they're basically managed they're managed companies for the owners or the shareholders right so now you got to label someone who's going to be in charge of kind of like the EIN and so on. So have all employees complete these forms. You got the form I-9, Employment Eligibility Verification, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. There's a link to that here. Form W-4, Employees Withholding Allowance Certificate. Pay business taxes. The form of business determines what taxes must be paid and how to pay them. So you got to pay your business taxes. So proprietorship flows through to the individual, as we saw here. So you just got the Schedule C, you're just gonna tack on the Schedule C. Be aware that you do also not only have federal income taxes, but self-employment taxes, which is even more painful than if you worked as a W-2 employee because they're kind of the employee and employer portion. And that comes as a shock to a lot of people and they get behind on their taxes when they move from a W-2 employee to a, a, a sole proprietor. So it's just like, like like my cousin's five-year-old kid with her birthday coming up, but it's an expensive birthday because you would think you only had to buy like the bicycle, but no, there's like an added tax, which is like the, the tax for the self-employment tax. And it's even bigger than what you paid as a W to any case. If you're a corporation then the corporation's gonna pay a separate tax that they're gonna, they're gonna deal with. And then you're gonna have to pay taxes on the dividends possibly, but it's more likely if you're a small business, you set up an S corporation or LLC, which are also flow through entities ultimately taxed on your tax return. Although you do have to file another tax return and it'll flow through. So it is quite a bit more complex and costly on the management paying the tax professional to deal with all that kind of stuff. So, uh, so in any case, visit state websites. So make sure, and you also have the state taxes. Some states are jerks and they, ta <laughs> they tax you and call, call them penalties just so they can pretend it's not a tax. It's, a, it's just a service fee or whatever. So uh, make sure that you are aware of your state responsibility. Prospective uh, business owners should visit their state's website for info about state requirements. There's a link to that here and there'll be a link to all this wonderful stuff in the description.